Hello, I'm Sherry Sturman, Director of Crayola Education. We're excited to share this series, Creative Spa for Teachers, with everyone who educates children at school and at home. This is a special time and place where you can rejuvenate, refresh, and rekindle your creative spirit. Today, you'll receive great tips on how to fill up your wellness cup using recreation and mindfulness. And you'll learn how to help yourself and your students flourish. I'm thrilled to introduce today's guest, Megan Young, recreational therapist and founder of Grow Through Flow. Megan, we're delighted to have you join us. Let's start by hearing more about your background, your interest in recreation, leisure, and play to relieve stress, to heal, and establish a personal wellness plan. Started when you merged your professional training as a recreational therapist with your mantra, follow your heart. Please tell us about your journey from working in healthcare facilities in Nova Scotia to the new path that you've decided to follow and why having fun and sparking joy are both at the core of your journey. I grew up in Halifax, Nova Scotia and studied rec therapy in Newfoundland and Labrador. So I'm a Canadian. Uh, but since that time, when I graduated 12 years ago, I have taken my personal mantra of follow your heart with me throughout Canada and the US. Uh, I've worked as a rec therapist from places like Vancouver, British Columbia to Memphis, Tennessee. And right now I reside in St. Petersburg, Florida, where I supervise a therapeutic recreation program in a parks and recreation department. I have a passion and a keen interest in personal well-being and how we can use recreation, leisure, and play to improve it. I think that our holistic well-being is crucial for how we move through life, how we impact others, and how we make a difference in the world. And I think that not many of us are aware of the incredible impact that recreation, leisure, and play, when we're intentional with it, can have on that. I love having fun and sparking joy. I think that when we focus on having fun ourselves, it's contagious and we show others what is possible and how to fully engage with life. And there's nothing better than sparking joy in someone else. So being able to bring something that's enjoyable and fun into somebody else's world can make the difference. Megan, many of our viewers are wondering what the term recreational therapy means. In addition to the physical aspects of movement, releasing, resting and restoring, you emphasize that positive energy is an essential element. Please provide our viewers with tips for how they can engage in recreational activities, even if they don't consider themselves to be athletic or they don't feel like an exercise enthusiast. Recreation therapy or therapeutic recreation is a professional healthcare discipline that uses recreation, leisure, and play to intentionally help others improve their holistic well being. Recreation therapists work in many different settings from schools, the hospitals, veteran services, parks and recreation departments. We're really all over the place and what I like to consider the best kept secret of healthcare. For your question about how we can engage in exercise, even though we might not be considered an exercise enthusiast, when we look at our holistic well-being, physical health is one component of it. It's a very important component, but there are other realms of holistic well-being. Like most things, I think our view on exercise starts with our language around it. So I even like to take the term exercise out of my interventions with those that I serve and within my own internal dialogue and replace it with words like physical activity or movement because they seem a little less intimidating. And essentially, the best thing that you can do for taking on more exercise, more physical activity, more movement is to find those that you enjoy. There was a big research article that spanned over quite a few years trying to figure out what the best exercise program was. And what they found was the number one factor that kept people uh, engaged and to follow through a physical activity program is if they enjoyed it or not. So when I work with folks trying to pick up good exercise, physical activity habits, the number one focus is always around enjoyment. If you don't like what you're doing, don't do it. There are so many ways that we can get movement into our daily life from 
going for a walk around the block after dinner, to dancing in our home with our children, to picking up a Zumba class, the options are really endless. And so our, our likes and dislikes are gonna change over time and we just need to find things that we enjoy. In the honor of Teacher Appreciation Week, we'd like you to talk about being a learner and a teacher. I love that you call yourself a forever student who gets joy from sharing life's lessons with others. Please tell us about your big four lessons and tie them into this special message for teachers who are so busy taking care of others that they often forget to fill their own cup. I believe that in, thing, in life, things happen, happen for us, not to us. So when we go through challenging seasons of life or we have obstacles to overcome, if we can keep the mindset that there's a lesson here to learn and I can use this information to improve my life or help improve the lives of others, it makes going through those challenging times a little easier. So some of the big lessons or takeaways I've taken from my life in the challenging season so far is number one, to identify your own worth. We work so hard to advocate for the worth of others, to make sure that others are taken care of but we need to take a moment, step back and do that for ourselves as well. In order to take care of others in the capacity of a teacher, a mother, a sibling, a daughter, a father, whatever role you might be, you have to make sure that your cup is full first. And once your cup is full, you can pour into others. My second big lesson is that self-care is more than bubble bath. Self-care kind of gets a bad rep sometimes as indulgent and really those activities like bubble baths, going shopping, doing your nails are really just the tip of the self-care iceberg. When we look at a holistic well-being, things like the foods that we're eating, the people we're surrounding ourselves with, seeking mental health counseling, taking care of our personal finances, our home lives, all of these things can be considered self-care. Self-care in my mind is really just actions that we take today for a better tomorrow. Third lesson is to find ways to stay inspired. Sometimes life can become really challenging and we kind of get caught in the weeds of our day-to-day -day duties. What can we do? What habits and routines can we put into place to help us stay more inspired, to help fill ourselves with a sense of purpose? And I think one of the hacks that you can do in order to stay inspired is to find out what your strengths are and really lean into them. If you're somebody who is really creative, find ways to do that more often and maybe surround yourself with others who do the same. Finally, number four is to build an intentional community. Who are you surrounding yourself with and how do they make you feel? This includes the people that you're hanging out with. This includes the influences that you see online on a regular basis, the podcasts that you listen to, the books that you read. Building an intentional community is one of the most crucial things that we can do for our overall well-being because those around us are going to influence us. And if we can intentionally select influences and people who make us feel good, reach for our goals, stay on a path of self-care and well-being, then we're going to be happier in the end for it. Thank you. That was great. I love that your life lessons include both self-care and a caring community because nobody can really do this alone. So thank you for, for emphasizing that intentional community. Now let's talk about human flourishing. Megan, you've gathered a lot of insight from following the work of the researcher, Dr. Martin Segelman, and others who study positive psychology and human flourishing. Please tell our viewers why it takes optimism, active engagement, and positive relationships to really thrive and flourish. So many of the themes and concepts that research is proving to be true are already intertwined in our daily living, in our lessons that we teach our children, in our religious practices, in so many different aspects of life. But this scientific study gives terms and words that we can use to explain those feelings and situations that we might be in. Positive psychology and the theory of human flourishing is really the study on how to live a good life, which sounds simple when you say it like that. And it really is simple information. It's just how we take that information and implement it. So I think your question about how we can teach these concepts to children is a great one because a lot of the stories, the books that we read and a lot of the lessons that we go over touch on these values and these concepts. But I think knowing that the research supports them, we can really drive those factors home. And so we're setting our children up for success later in life that I really do need to prioritize relationships. 
because it's going to make me happier at the end of the day. Or it's okay to feel big emotions, to feel sad, to feel lonely, to feel frustrated. But if I can find ways to incorporate more positive emotions into my daily life, like gratitude or awe or love, then I'm going to be happier in the end. So we're excited to see the hands-on demonstrations. The first of today's hands-on experiences is called Flow. So Megan, you're going to guide our viewers through a self-reflection experience where they remember experiences that fully engage them. First, tell us about the concept of flow, what it means, and who has studied this aspect of creativity and mindfulness. Flow is a state of optimal being, where you're fully immersed in activity, and you feel like you lose track of time, and like nothing going around, going outside around you really matters. It's when we have a perfect balance between the challenge of the activity and the skills that we innately have. And this concept was first studied by Dr. Mahai Chasek Mahai, who was one of my heroes in the field of positive psychology. Research has shown that flow has many benefits, from experiencing more happiness, to reported higher life satisf satisfaction, to being able to regulate our emotions better, being able to have more attention and focus, and even improvements in our work, school, and sport lives. For the first component of this activity, we're going to start with a visualization. I'd like you to get nice and comfortable now in your seat. We uncross your legs. So we're going to start by taking a slow and deliberate breath in through the nose and release out through the mouth in a nice controlled manner. We're going to do this for another deep breath in and release out. While we invite new air into the lower pockets of our lungs and chest. We're going to notice and release any tension that we become aware of through this process. We're going to gently roll our shoulders back, tilt our head from side to side, and let the muscles relax as we move into this visualization activity. We're going to keep this intentional relaxation as we move forward. I want you to picture yourself as a child. Think back to a time in your life when you were happily engaged in an activity that you absolutely love. You feel complete control over the situation. Fully present in the moment, not thinking about anything other than the task at hand. You're feeling wonderful because the challenge of the activity is a perfect fit for your skill level as you move through it with effortlessness and ease. Completely focused, having fun. Not lost in thought about yesterday or tomorrow. Time tends to lose a sense of meaning. Minutes, hours, days go by while you're engaged in this truly fulfilling activity. You engage in this for no other reason than for the enjoyment it provides. I want you to take a moment and to think about what activity that was that you were doing. and lock that in. Now I want you to visualize yourself today. As you move through life, through your many to-dos and obligations, have you felt any of those same things you once felt as a child? Or have you really just been going with the current of life along for the ride? I want you to ask yourself, what could younger you teach you about what you truly enjoy doing? What feels good in the moment and for your soul? And we're gonna grab a piece of paper and some gel pens to do a mind map. So I'm gonna recommend using the take note washable gel pen. 
They come in wonderful colors, really easy to use, and they dry quick. So for a mind map activity where we're going to be writing down some uh, thoughts very quickly, these are going to work perfect. So for step one of this mind map activity, I'd like you to pick a color. And in the middle of our sheet, we're going to write the word flow. I like to pick a nice blue color because I associate the word flow with water, but you can pick whatever color you would like. So looking at a little bit something like this. Next part that we're going to do is we are going to add in four to six lines reaching out in different directions throughout the page. And I'm going to recommend that you pick four to six different colors because we're going to associate each of these lines, each of these colors with a different flow activity. So as we were going through the visualization activity, hopefully some ideas came to you about the activities that you really like engaging in. These are activities that bring on a state of flow. When I say something that resonates with you, I would like you to write the word at the end of the line. So somewhere along right there. So a fine arts activity could be painting, sculpture, poetry or dance, it could be movement-based activities, running, swimming, roller skating or rock climbing. It could be mindful or spiritual activities like yoga, meditation, prayer or breath work. It could be nature-based activities like hiking or gardening, bird watching, fishing or camping. It could be cognitive activities. Things that challenge our minds, like Sudoku, crossword puzzles, reading for enjoyment. Hopefully that list gave you an idea if you're having a hard time trying to pick out your flow activities. And at the end, your sheet should look something like this. Next and final step of this activity, I want you to start brainstorming around the ideas of why you think it would induce flow for you. Is it because you really enjoy the activity? Is it because it's easily accessible? Is it because your friends do it and you love spending time with your friends? Is it because your children really enjoy the activity and you guys can all get into a state of flow together? And I also want you to jot down some ideas of things that you can do to make the activity more likely to bring on a state of flow. All right, so I'm gonna show you an example. For hiking, uh, that's one of the flow activities that I have chosen for myself. It's something that I know that I enjoy and has brought on a state of flow for me in the past. Some of the ideas around that to help me bring on a state of flow would be um, to make the hikes a little bit challenging so that I fall in that flow channel between skill and challenge, to have my cell phone with me for safety, but probably to turn the ringer off and to put it in a part of my backpack where I won't be scrolling social media. Uh, just being in nature is something that I really enjoy doing. So really trying to find beautiful scenic hikes that bring on lots of different scenery, background images to look at, maybe even bringing along my camera to take some photos while I'm doing it because photography is something I enjoy. So I want you to spend some time doing that for each of the activities. And I want you to keep this mind map because it's really just a starting point for thinking about flow and for thinking about how you can incorporate it into your life. Even if you don't have a big stretch of time, we can find flow in little tiny pockets of our day. And sometimes that's all we can do because life gets hectic and busy. And so when we think ahead about the activities that can help us get into flow, then we can fully prepare for it. Thank you, Megan. I love how you talk about small little snippets, small chunks of time, and you can go deeply into flow, um, lots of different places, doing many different things. And how many of the activities that were on the mind map can be done with kids. Uh, they resonate, you know, beautifully with nature, hiking, a lot of the creative activities that you outlined. Now let's go to the second art activity. Uh, please tell our viewers how this project fits under the umbrella of RAIN um, and that the acronym is something they can use 
by themselves or with kids to reinforce this connection between emotions and wellness. BRAIN is an acronym for a mindfulness technique that we can use when we experience big or heavy emotions in life. BRAIN is also a way that we can tap into our unconscious habits and patterns to hopefully change them for the better. This term was first coined about 20 years ago by Michelle McDonald, but was recently made popular uh, by a mindfulness teacher uh, named Tara Birch. The letter R stands for recognize. So you start this technique by recognizing when you're having an emotional response to something that's happened. We experience emotions all day, every day. And so this is really a, the first starting point in trying to figure out what brought on that emotional response for us. The first step isn't easy, but it's really empowering when we're able to see what's going on behind the surface level and being able to figure out that pathway between experience and then the emotion that we have. I think when we're teaching this to kids, uh, this is a really good place that we can have intentional conversations. Uh, it might not be a good conversation to have in the heat of a moment when a child is really upset, uh, but when you reflect or debrief a situation, once they've come back down to really feeling regulated, you can help them trace back to what was the instant or what was the thing that happened that brought on that emotional feeling for them. A is for allow. Now that you have a pretty good idea of what caused you to have an emotional reaction, it's time to create some space. When we allow, we allow time for this emotion to wash over us, to pass over us, so that we can move into a different state of being. The next letter in this acronym is I for investigate. Time to put on our, our detective hat and focus our attention on the present moment. What are the factors that brought you to this emotional response? What was the trigger or the catalyst that caused this emotional reaction in you? In order to do this step successfully, we have to bring in self-compassion. We're not going to judge why we had the emotional reaction or what the trigger was for us. We're just going to identify it. We're going to investigate the situation. And finally, N is for not identify. So the last part of the RAIN technique is more a mentality than an actual step. It's the ability to separate our experience from who we are at our core. We can experience emotions without being them. We can feel sadness without becoming sad people. We can experience frustration and anger without becoming a frustrated, angry person. Okay, so we are going to move on to the art component of activity. For this component, what I'm going to recommend is the Crayola watercolor pencil. Very cool. They're color pencils, but when you add water, they become like watercolor paint. So I love them. So for this activity, you're going to need a white sheet of paper. And I want you to pick a color that for you signifies rain, rain clouds, kind of like a cloudy day. So it could be a blue, a gray, a black, whatever you're feeling. I'm going to go with purple. I'm going to do a violet. So what I want you to do at the top of your sheet is I want you to draw a few big rain clouds. You can make them as big, as fluffy as you'd like. So inside these clouds, we're going to give them a label of a big or challenging emotion that we've sometimes experienced. So this could be sadness, could be anger, could be loneliness, could be guilt, could be frustration. You can even draw in little sad or angry faces in the cloud too to add to it. Okay, so it looks something like this. Now I want you to put your dark rain color color pencil away. And I want you to pick a nice, vibrant color that really speaks happiness and positivity to you. So I like this pink color. And down in the lower section of our sheet, we're going to draw a big umbrella. And the umbrella is going to stretch, cover most of the page, we have a little room underneath it. This is the umbrella. And you're going to separate it into four parts. One, two, three, four. Now what I'd like you to do in each part of the umbrella in your four quadrants, I'd like you to write the four steps of rain in each one of them. So in the first quadrant, I want you to put R, recognize, in the second, put A for allow. 
And the third, put I for investigate. And in the fourth and final, put N for not identify. So it's something like that. So for the next part, we're going to put down that bright, fun color. We're going to lay that down and we're going to go ahead and we're going to pick up our um, rainy day color again. And what we're going to do is we're going to add in the rain falling down from the clouds. But thankfully, we have the umbrella to protect the space underneath the umbrella. So you can take some time right now with your blue color pen, maybe different shades of blue, add in some raindrops. So it's going to look something like this. We are going to draw an image of ourselves being safe and protected from these big challenging emotions in life under the span of the umbrella, under the use of this rain technique. So you can draw yourself, you can draw your family, you can draw maybe your, your pets in your home. You're just going to draw the factors in your life, mainly yourself, but those around you who can benefit from the use of this rain technique. So although we're still going to need to go through life and to go through rainy days, days where the weather is not how we want it to be, we can still keep ourselves safe, dry, and protected. Look something like this. There's me, some of the emotions. And the cool part of using these watercolor pencils is that you can make it really interactive by taking a paintbrush getting it a little bit wet. And then getting those rain droplets. Oh, it's so cool. Getting these rain droplets wet and it makes it into an interactive watercolor experience. Great, I love that. And the rain acronym uh, and that visualization is something the kids will really understand. So that's great to do with children. While our viewers are finishing up their artwork, I'd like to remind everyone that it's easy to stay updated on future Create a Spa for Teacher sessions and many other Creole education programs. Just sign up for our free Creola Creative Learning e-newsletter. Each month, new teaching ideas and tips for taking care of yourself will, will arrive in your email. Wow, Megan, you have shared so many great insights about the ways that our emotions and relationships help us flourish. Our viewers are excited to connect with you after this program. Please tell us how our viewers can follow you online and keep learning from you. Yeah, well, this has absolutely been my pleasure. You can follow me at my blog, which is growthroughflow.com or on social media like Instagram or Facebook, where you can look me up at at growthroughflow. Megan, this has been super informative and inspirational. Your approach to mindfulness fits perfectly with Teacher Appreciation Week, reminding us to express our gratitude to those who teach our children and reminding us all to practice self-care. What closing remarks do you want to share with today's viewers as they focus on gratitude and appreciation? In order to serve others, take care of others, be the teacher that you want to be, the family member that you want to be, the friend you want to be, is that we first have to take care of ourselves. And sometimes that can be really hard when we're typically pouring into others. But to remember that in order to do that, we need to pour into ourselves first. And that we can do that in really fun and engaging ways. Love the emphasis on fun and engagement there. Absolutely. We want to thank Megan Young for inspiring us today. And a special thanks to all of you who've joined us for this session. Stay well, stay strong, and take care of yourself creatively. Bye, everyone. Goodbye. <laughs>